Look at the notes. Uh, you're saying it's time to ramp up the risk exposure and really kind of move the dial when it comes to risk appetite right now. Does the Fed story actually help that sort of call now, now that we're starting to see a little bit of tweaking when it comes to that sort of Fed tightening? Yeah, good morning. Um, look, I, I think we have to put the Fed comments in, into perspective, actually. So we're not for one second doubting that the Fed is going to continue with this hiking cycle and even uh, rates that are now priced in at around sort of five and a half, five and three quarters. We, we, we sort of get that. Uh, and, and we think the market is also largely sort of priced in for that. What we would probably say about the Fed is that uh, our own proprietary indicators on inflation are actually showing that inflation in the US uh, is, is actually falling quite sharply on uh, on a short term basis, on a sort of month on month basis in, in various sort of sectors. And, and given the very challenging base effects on, on the headline uh, over the next couple of months, we're going to see quite a sharp fall in the headline rates on inflation. So I think there are plenty of signals out there that actually suggest that the worst is over as far as inflation is concerned. So famous last words, but that's what we're going by in any case. And the <laughs> tightening of policy by the Fed is actually priced in. So if there's any deviation away from what's priced in, it's likely to be the Fed just a little bit more uh, able to potentially um, misprice what's already priced in by cutting less going forward in terms of interest rates. So we actually think that the bias here actually is on the Fed being a touch less aggressive going forward. And we just think that's going to be supportive for risk. Hmm. Uh, Dwee, we're just looking at uh, on our graphics right now, dollar China. Dollar almost, dollar against almost everything has been dropping. Uh, have we seen the peak in the dollar? Hmm. Uh, do you think? We we think so. Um, I, I, one of the things that we think has happened over the last week or so is there's been, frankly, the move against the dollar has been too rapid, too too much of an adjustment. Part of that may be positioning led. Uh, part of that is also right. going to be, of course, policy led. Um, let's not forget the dollar is extremely overvalued. Uh, dollar is extremely overweight in terms of positioning. We do think we've moved towards a. Um, we're actually neutral dollar right now. We think we've moved towards an environment that's actually going to be more supportive for some of the other higher beta currencies. So we're starting to see a lot more interest in things like commodity currencies. Uh, and we actually think that as we go forward and as we see the bias of risks towards the Fed, probably pairing back some of the hike expectations, that will again not necessarily be supportive for the dollar, but its fall will be very gradual. But we do expect the dollar will actually moderate somewhat from here. Dwee, uh, the other thing that people are, are, are I guess, more excited about is 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 China when the, on the reopening story. But then you get one headline about deaths in Beijing that are picking up. We're, we're seeing near record numbers when it comes to mainland COVID cases. Does that support your sort of risk on sort of strategy moving forward now too? Well, we, we were always a little bit skeptical of this whole reopening story, frankly, as we were coming into the winter months. So the, the soundings that have been coming from Beijing have obviously been a lot more constructive over the last couple of weeks. But to actually expect a, a very conservative political body to suddenly open up China and remove restrictions in November and into the, 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 the the most dangerous season, as it were, for, for these type of pandemic pandemic instances. We always thought that was very, very optimistic. So we didn't expect additional tightening, but neither did we expect reopening in the conventional sense. <clears throat> now, of course, this complicates the whole issue of whether they might put tightening uh, policies back in place. But we were never advocates of the reopening stance in the first place. We actually think that was going to be a sort of Q2 story probably for next year. Whether they will shift towards uh, additional tightening is another story. The economy really cannot support it. So they have a very difficult balance there of needing to be a lot more um, e economically minded in terms of its implications. But at the same time, obviously, th there is no scope to really relax re uh, restrictions right now. So I think they might start mm. talking still about how this may be uh, on the cusp for next year, but they won't really do anything in terms of reopening. Whether they put on further restrictions, though, there's an economic cost to that. And that's a balance that they're really going to have to weigh. Do we for just like the Fed, all they have to do is really talk about it. You know, the orientation, the direction of travel is, is what markets look at. Um, your long, one of your calls is long EM equities. Does that go into the Fed call, the China call, or both? 
It actually goes into both because if you see a Fed that is a touch less aggressive in tightening, that has implications clearly for for global monetary policy, and that's that there's a very strong correlation between what the Fed does and how emerging markets do. Uh, with respect to China, that's probably less of a call on 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 emerging markets more generally because emerging markets for us are on the equity side are, are, are very mm. uh, commodity heavy. And so we're actually basing some of our pro EMs call on support from commodity markets. And again, that's that's not independent of what goes on in terms of the dollar and, and the US as well. So the commodity side for us is, is important. And this comes back to what I mentioned earlier on that where we're seeing interest in the currency space is in a lot of the commodity currencies. It's part and parcel of the same story. But we actually think that emerging markets from a valuations perspective, from a positioning perspective, 2023 could be quite a decent year because a lot of the bad news we feel is already priced in. And that would include, for example, the restrictions in China, which we do expect next year that we will see a chink of light in terms of their loosening. Uh, you have the two other contrarian market views. You have your overweight on yen and mm. long UK equities. How, how much conviction is behind mm. those calls mm. now to be for? Well, uh, the long UK equity one is is probably the, the, um, the biggest no-brainer of the lot as far as we're concerned because it's actually a very, very clear play on currency weakness. And so when you look at the US, uh, sorry, the UK equity market historically, uh, it tends to trade very closely to how sterling trades. And so in an environment of, of weak sterling, that tends to support a lot of the multinationals in the UK. And the UK is a market that's very heavily dominated by multi multinational firms. So that that's very much centered around uh, the weakness of uh, of the currency and 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 the yen trade. Uh, look, sure. the yen trade is there as a bit of a sort of risk risk hedge for us because invariably we have our portfolio right now that's actually quite positive on risk. The yen is there as a bit of a hedge, but the yen is there as a very cheap hedge. And as we've seen over the last couple of weeks, any semblance of suggestion from the Fed that they're going to be less aggressive going forward, and the yen, uh, as with other currencies that have been, in our opinion, oversold will adjust very, very quickly. So it's there as a bit of a risk hedge, but we also feel it's further to go with, with the yen as well. Once we start to see some sort of normalization in terms of the uh, monetary policy situation in the US.